Howdy YouTube. Got a lot of questions after the assembly of this Harbor Freight drill press as to just what kind of accuracy you can expect from such a machine. It's great that it's only $400, but if the holes that it drills are all crooked and sideways and oblong, then it doesn't really do you any good. So today on Miscellaneous Matt, I thought I would run out here to the shop and check the run out of the drill press. To check the run out on something like a drill press doesn't require a lot of equipment. A dial indicator is really the only thing that you need in order to measure the run out itself. But beyond that, you're gonna to have to have some way to hold the dial indicator in place so that it's pressing up against whatever it is that you wanna measure. Uh, there are magnetic stands that you can buy with nice steel rods that articulate and make this process very easy. Or you could do what I have done, go the cheap route and clamp some wood to, in my case, the drill press. The dial indicator itself is pressed up against the spindle adapter in the drill press. Obviously, I've removed the chuck to do this. I tried to go pretty close to the bottom of the spindle adapter simply because if it is exhibiting runout, I will get the largest degree of runout at the bottom. Uh, up here close to the top, it could be, you know, it would be a little bit less if it's wobbling back and forth. That wobble will be exaggerated as you move down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a silver Sharpie marker and I'm going to get in here and I'm going to make a silver mark on the pulley. And that mark gives me a reference to know when I've gone a complete 360 degrees with the spindle. Now one problem with this rig is that it is made of clamps and soft woods and it's just not very rigid. The dial indicator just by you know, shaking this drill press a little bit reads plus or minus two thousandths. I'm going to have to be very, very careful as I'm turning this pulley not to introduce a lot of vibration into the machine because that's going to give me a false reading. I did leave the tension on the belts. Um, I want whatever pressure is uh, put on this system by the motor and the tension of all the pulleys. If that influences the run out, it's gonna do so while it's running. So I wanna have it that way now. So here we are at the zero point. Let's go ahead and crank this bad boy around. There we are at about three o'clock. That's six-ish. There's nine o'clock. and all the way back around. What you're seeing on the dial indicator is very, very minor movement. It's less than a thousandth of an inch the whole way around there. And quite honestly, I think most of that is vibration because watch what happens when I just put my hand on this pulley and wiggle just the tiniest little bit. See what that dial indicator is doing? I can pull this thing easily a thousandth of an inch one way or the other. And I don't believe that that is slop in the bearings on here. I think that is, see, look at this. <laughs> I think that is just play in the setup that I have that holds the dial indicator. Either way, I'm happy whether that thousandth of an inch is real or it's a deficiency in my measuring setup. Uh, one thousandth of an inch on a $400 drill press is to me, that's outstanding. The process for measuring the run out of the chuck body is exactly the same as it was for measuring the spindle. You clamp the dial indicator in place so that the needle is partially depressed. So you're in the middle of a reading, you zero it out. And then you run the pulley around 360 degrees, you know, a couple of times if you wish to figure out, you know, how much this thing is moving back and forth. So let's run this thing around and see what the run out actually is. We're starting at what we'll call our 12 o'clock position. I've got my silver Sharpie mark right here. Let's turn this thing about 90 degrees or so. 
to the three o'clock position and I'm gonna take my hands off of it so that we're not vibrating the rig and uh, see what the runout is. We're up to about two thou. Turn it around to six o'clock and well, maybe two and a half, two and three quarter thousandths. Come around here to the nine o'clock position. And we're back down to zero. And then hopefully we stay, well, close enough for jazz, half a thou. We're back at our start point. Obviously, this isn't an exact uh, science. I've got a Harbor Freight drill press. I've got a Harbor Freight dial indicator, and I'm doing this by hand. Um, but for the purposes of what we're doing today, I think that it's accurate enough. Uh, we're getting an order of magnitude here. It seems like the runout on the spindle itself is somewhere in the neighborhood of just one thousandth, and the neighborhood of five thousandths or less. Uh, worst case scenario, I mean, I guess on a good day you could call this three thousandths of runout on the outside of the chuck. One last thing to check and that is the run out of something that is actually chucked up inside the chuck. I really, really wish that I had something that I knew was perfectly round for this. Um, I'm going to get the highest run out readings I've seen so far, there's no doubt about it. Uh, the chuck jaws are just inherently a little bit more wonky than solid machined parts. They always will be. Um, and what I'm using here is a piece of that aluminum bar that we made the tripod monitor out of. And I just, I don't know how round that stuff is. Uh, it should be, should be perfectly round as a machined aluminum product, uh, but there's no telling. So I think as long as I get readings that are, I'm going to say 10 thou or less, uh, I'm going to be reasonably happy. Um, if I get something a lot larger than 10 thousandths, uh, then, you know, then I have to start looking for, do I need something that I know is round for the test or do I need to think about replacing the chuck or, or what's going on here? We've got it zeroed out. Uh, let's switch over to the dial cam and give this thing a spin, see what happens. Here we are at 12 o'clock. We're going to turn it around to the three o'clock position. And that's pretty good. That's only one thou, not even really. Of course, here we go, right? There's the six o'clock position and we're six thou out. And we're going to start coming around here to the nine o'clock position, then we're down to four thou, and then we'll come back to the 12 o'clock position, and we're back to zero. Six thou, using the stock chuck and a piece of just off the shelf aluminum bar stock as the, as the test, uh, with again, with a test rig that has been known to, to wiggle around a lot. It's well under my 10 thou limit where I was going to start to get worried about it. Um, would it be nice to have run out coming out of the chuck that was, you know, two thou, maybe even one? Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to pay two grand for a drill press, you can get that out of the box. As it is, knowing that I only have one thou of run out on the spindle adapter tells me that if I need higher precision from there down, it should be easy to get. I should be able to go and get a higher precision aftermarket chuck, probably something a little smaller, frankly, um, because you're unlikely to need that kind of high precision for a really big bit. Uh, it's only when you're drilling 1 16th and smaller holes that those, uh, you know, two and three thousandths start to become a big percentage of what you're doing. For now, I'm really happy, and I'll say it again, 400 bucks. You can't beat six thou of run out at the bit for 400 bucks. Next time we visit the drill press, it's going to be to check on square level, plumb, coplanar, all of the linear dimensions that are supposed to be either straight or perpendicular. But it's a project for another day. Stay safe, YouTube.